there guys, so today I'm here to do, I believe, my 25 week update. Now I know I haven't posted an update since 21 weeks pregnancy wise, and that's for a couple reasons. The main one being that I have like super easy pregnancies, so symptoms wise and such, there isn't a ton to update on every week. And I don't want to just come on and say the same thing. You know, I've been feeling okay, blah, blah, blah. But you guys do know that there are some bigger things that have been going on with my cervix and such. And I mentioned a while back in one of Revelyn's updates about getting tested for a connective tissue disorder. So I now have almost all the answers for those things. So the first thing being my cervix. And I had my four consecutive week check. And every time my cervix had been around a three instead of a 2.5. Originally, the geneticist told me that they like to see it usually between between 3.5 and 4.5, but that three was still seen as normal, I guess. So I did grow and all four weeks I stayed around a three and so I was good to go. I didn't have to get my cervix stitched shut. I didn't have to go on any uh, progesterone, I think it was. So I'm super thankful for that. Um, it just ended up that I have a shorter cervix and then it kind of grew and it's not anything they're currently looking at anymore. I'm super thankful for that because if it had come back as getting shorter, I would have been put on bed rest and a preterm labor risk, of course, and it would have been very difficult to take care of Rev while being on bed rest. <laughs> Almost impossible. If you guys have a one-year-old, then you know. She's constantly on the move. So the next thing is kind of, kind of a background is in Revelyn's, I wanna say her nine or 10 month update, I think I talked about how she had dislocated her shoulder or her elbow in her sleep. And someone, one of you guys, had actually mentioned looking into me possibly having a connective tissue disorder because they thought like things I had mentioned reminded them of it and that I could possibly have one. And it is genetic, so it's passed on. And so they were telling me to look into it to see if possibly it could be something that Rev has because dislocating your shoulder in your sleep is not normal at all. <laughs> I was able to get an appointment with the adult genetic counselor pretty quickly, mainly because I'm pregnant because they see it as more of a risk, obviously. If you have looser joints and such, it can cause problems with your water breaking earlier, things like that. So I went in earlier last week and I met with the geneticist and basically for a connective tissue disorder, I guess for the classic case, as SGA describes it, sometimes it can come in as blood work. There can actually be chromosomal differences. But with most cases and the case that she thinks I have, there isn't blood work that's going to come back as anything different. So mainly to test and see if you have it, they kind of like examine your body, have you like move certain ways, stuff like that. At the end of my exam, she was fairly certain that I did have one. And the one that she said I had, which was the one that I thought if I did have one it would be, was, and I know I'm pronouncing this wrong probably, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, I think, EDS. We'll just refer to it as EDS. Now, EDS Classic has a bunch of things going on with like scarring, the way that your tissues around your knees will look like there are things physically that if they just look at you and don't touch you, they can tell that you may have it. But she thinks that mine is not a classic case, it's hypermobility, which means that my joints are just extra flexible, <laughs> which makes sense um, because I don't have as many dislocations, but I have a lot of sublexes, which means that my joints pop out and then they go right back in. And so she had me do things like bending over to touch the ground. Now I was 24 weeks pregnant at that appointment and I was able to bend over and put my palms flat on the ground. And I just always thought I was just flexible. <laughs> but according to her, um, no, that is definitely a symptom of having hypermobility when it comes to EDS. And so another thing is for years, and I mean years, I have had this random pain that I get around my heart. And no doctor's been able to figure out what it was. I've had plenty of heart echoes. I have had a actual heart monitor on, trying to figure out what it was because it literally feels like a half second heart attack, like a stabbing pain. And it's really painful. Sometimes it'll be worse while I, when I breathe in, if it's happening, and sometimes it's just random. And I've had this going on since probably middle school, I think. And like I said, no doctor has been able to figure out what is going on. And so I just mentioned it to her because you're just supposed to mention everything that you know, you've had going on. And immediately she could tell me that it was because of my connective tissue disorder. I don't know everything in depth yet. Um, I've only had like one appointment with her to try and gather all this information. But the way she described it was that it sounds like it's the connective tissue around my heart that is causing that pain. And so that was like a huge sigh of relief because for years I've just kind of been like, you know what, probably one day I'll have a heart attack <laughs> way early on in life. And I guess that's just that, because um, they just have not been able to figure out what it was. 
And so she assured me that it was not my heart, it was probably just the connective tissue around it. And so I feel about a bazillion times better about that. So she did though still order me a blood test, which I have that blood test on Monday. Like I said, the probability of something chromosomal coming back as different is very unlikely with this type of EDS. So probably nothing will come back, but I also had an, another heart echo today. And specifically she wanted to look at the aorta and I think it had something to do with how it moves, I'm not sure, um, but I won't know until next week what the results were. Ultrasound technicians can't really tell you anything, but her wording was, I don't see anything that makes me need to run out of the room. <laughs> so that could mean she didn't see anything at all, or that could mean that she saw something that is different, but nothing that's life-threatening. So I do know for sure that there's nothing life-threatening wrong with my heart, um, and I don't think that there ever was going to be. I think there is something which she didn't explain it very long, that is different in those that have hypermobility EDS, or it might be all EDS, I don't know, that she can see in the way your blood flows through your aorta. That's how it sounded. I don't really know. It was a lot of medical terminology that went way over my head. <laughs> so I will find out next week what the results are from that. Um, but glad to know that there is nothing seriously wrong with my heart if there had been there definitely isn't, so that's a good thing. So along with that, she wants to see my daughter immediately, so I have to make an appointment for her. It sounds like she's worried about the fact that she is so small. Now, Revelyn is a year old, and we just took her to urgent care, and she was just under 17 pounds. If you have a baby, then you know that that is very tiny, and so she's a little worried about how small she is and the fact that she wasn't born small um, and then the fact that she sleeps a very strange way. I showed her the way she sleeps and the geneticist that they have at the hospital, she's only there like once a month so it's very hard to get in with her but her main job that she is is actually a pediatrician and so she sees a lot of ways babies sleep <laughs> and I showed her the way that Revelyn sleeps. If you guys follow me on Instagram then you've probably seen it and I will insert a picture. Um, she had never seen that before and so she is a little bit worried about her so she wants to see Revelyn as soon as possible to see if it is something that she may have from the way Revelyn's joints work and everything that it might be a bigger issue for her if she does have it and I guess she said it's a 50% chance that I would pass it on to her if I have it. So that is kind of where we are at right now. There's some things with pregnancy and some things that are kind of unrelated to pregnancy going on. I've had a lot of doctor's appointments, a lot of ultrasounds and I think I only have one more ultrasound at 32 weeks because they want to check the baby's size. So beyond that though, there are some bigger things going on just regular pregnancy wise, like I have definitely been getting Braxton Hicks contractions. I didn't get any of those with Revlin. So it's been very different. It kind of worried me the first time because like I said, I didn't, I didn't have any with Revlin. And I guess it is normal that sometimes you won't your first pregnancy and you will your second or your third. Um, and so I've had a lot of them and they haven't just been tightening, they've been painful. Um, but because of how much my cervix has been checked, it's definitely not a worry. They assured me that everything I'm feeling is normal. It's just I am more susceptible to them this time around. I definitely am carrying much bigger than I was with Revlin at 25 weeks. Um, and I'm not complaining. It's actually nice that I'm finally getting to the point, almost, that people are like, oh, she's pregnant not just a little bloated. <laughs> it has been kind of crazy how fast this pregnancy is going. Definitely with taking care of a child that you already have um, makes your pregnancies go so much faster, which is exciting and scary all at the same time because I feel like I had so much time to just mentally attempt because you really can't prepare yourself to be a parent, let's be honest. You can attempt as much as possible to mentally prepare yourself to be a parent. I feel like I had the time I needed with Revlin and you're just so go, 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 go when you have a child already that you don't have time to like mentally prepare yourself for two kids. <laughs> um, but I know that everything will be fine. I think I have the same fear that every parent of a second child does of like, you know, will I love this child just as much as Revlin? What if I forget about Revlin? Like, I know that a lot of moms have these thoughts and I definitely have had them. But I do feel like over the last couple weeks I've just kind of more bonded with Airly. I think it was harder in the beginning because um, I just like kept forgetting that I was pregnant but with the more she moves and such you just kind of grow a, a stronger bond and I still think that that fear up until I see her face is going to be there of will I love her as much as Revlin or will I forget about Revlin, things like that that I know that every second time mom has I think they'll always kind of be there until Airly's there and then I just hear your heart just grows and 
all as well. <laughs> so that is going to be it for this update, guys. I do want to let you know that I did talk about doing the EC update possibly last week, and I didn't because I had forgot when I put up <laughs> Revlon's update earlier in the week that last week was Christmas and we were hosting Christmas. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday was way too busy for me to record anything. And then I also decided that it just made more sense to do like a year elimination communication update. Um, I don't know, it just made more sense to me. So I'm just gonna do an update after a year. And then I also wanna know if you guys will be interested in me doing a video on what Revelyn got for Christmas. Not to like boast what she got or anything like that, but because I know as a mom, sometimes you're interested in what other toys are out there, especially the toys you don't see on the norm all the time. And I get comments every day probably um, asking about where we get certain toys that Revelyn has. So I just thought that maybe it would be fun for you guys to see kind of what toys are out there. And a lot of these toys, I do know where they were because a lot of them were on our Amazon wish list. We did a lot of Amazon wish list Christmas shopping within our family this year. So almost everything, if you guys have Amazon, you can get it. So that's pretty cool too. So if you guys wanna see that video, let me know down below. The EC video will be coming in the nearest future. I don't know if this is going up today or tomorrow. If it goes up on Friday, then Revelyn, it's her birthday and she is a year old and that's crazy. Which, that is why this video might go up Friday instead of Thursday because I am crazy busy today with the last minute things I need to do for her party. I almost forgot to do the bump shot, so this is my bump at 25 weeks. I feel like every time I do a video, my bump looks smaller than it does like the rest of the day. And it's like midday, so it really shouldn't be that much smaller. I've eaten plenty today. Do, 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 do. And Nana has decided, <laughs> Nana has decided to make like a banana cream pie or whatever, just so she could play with bananas in the store. <laughs> yeah. Our grandma's the best, <laughs> so she loves, you guys remember, she loves bananas and so she's good because it's about nap time and so we're trying to get all this done.